Hi, I'm James Martin. I'm continuing my tour of the Mediterranean in search of some of its finest food and drink. Along the way, I'm going to be cooking some great Mediterranean-inspired dishes for you to try at home. Now today, I'm in one of my favourite places in the world, the Italian coast of Amalfi. I'm sailing into the port of Minori on the stunning Amalfi coast. Whilst I'm here, I'm going to be getting a crash course on making the area's oldest pasta and learn the secret behind the local seafood speciality, Aqua Pazza. But first, I'm heading up to the cliffs above Minori to sample the area's most famous ingredient. Now, as a chef, sometimes we take ingredients for granted, but here is the king of all ingredients of Italy. It's the Amalfi lemon. Amalfi lemons are iconic to this area. They date back to Roman times, and today they're still farmed in the traditional way with every single one picked by hand. Here at the Villa Maria farmhouse, they have their own lemon groves. Vincenzo Ruelco's family have farmed here for generations, and along with his wife Maria, they now also run a guest house and restaurant. Maria does all the cooking, while Vincenzo looks after the lemons, which are harvested from February to October. Amalfi cost because uh, if you crush lemon, lots of juice. Yeah, lot of juice. Uh. The lemons here are known for their intense flavour and juiciness, which I'm looking forward to putting to the test with my first dish. Now, to give justice to these lemons, I thought I'd go to France. I know it's a bit of a swear word in Italy, but I'm going to do a simple little crepe Suzette souffle. But using the lemons, they use lemons and oranges, but you can use either or. But first of all, we're going to make a pancake batter. It's eggs, flour, milk. Easy as that. Now, I always think the temptation with pancakes is to mess around and flipping it around. Just leave it in the pan. That way it'll colour just slightly on the bottom and then it's ready to then turn over. Flip it over. We are now ready to simply make our sauce. We can actually make our sauce in this pan. And to do that, I need some caster sugar and we're going to caramelise this. And while that's caramelising, look at that. Fresh Amalfi lemons. I'm just going to slice these nice and thin. I'm going to serve the whole lot, rind on it and everything. I think you get so much flavour out of the lemon rind, particularly over here. They just taste different to any lemon you've probably ever tasted. And they were telling me earlier, they actually just put salt on it and serve it in a nice salad with some parsley and some seafood. It's wonderful. They're not sharp, they're just Almost like tasting lemonade, delicious. For a double lemony hit, I'm using the region's most famous lemon liqueur, limoncello. And it's made from the rinds of lemons and Vincenzo makes his own on site. Once the caramel is a deep golden brown colour, it's ready for a generous measure. Lemoncello in. Flame it. Watching his lemon trees. These lemon pieces and a good squeeze of lemon juice. And this is where the Amalfi lemons really come into their own. The amount of juice you get out of here, it's almost like a glass per lemon. We incorporate all that together and instantly it cooks our lemon on here. Easy as that. Now to enrich it and to flavour it even more, and put a little knob of butter in there, just to finish it all off. Now I wouldn't do this normally, but nobody's looking. That is magical, magical, magical. To make these extra special, I'm adding a souffle filling of whisked egg white, lemon zest, ready-made custard and sugar. Once folded together, it's ready to go into my pancakes. Now what you want to do is divide this pancake into quarters. Place some of your souffle mixture on one side, fold it over, and then fold it over again. Now ideally what you want to do is bake it in the oven at this point, 
What I'm doing is just pan frying them in there. Just cover them with the lid. I'm going to cook those for about a couple of minutes. So just to serve these, we've got our sauce ready. Now these will actually souffle up as they're cooking. And then you've got your nice sauce. So just some fresh basil leaves. Rather than just use the stereotypical mint, have a go at doing this. It tastes so good but it needs to be put in at the last minute. So a quick mix together, pour it over the top of your pancakes. Lemon ice cream. You get to taste this. Tell me what you think. Is it hot? It's not good, it's fantastic. It's not good. <laughs> he had me worried then. It's fantastic. <laughs> as well as farming, the Ruocos run a guest house and restaurant. Specialities include aubergine, parmigiana and caponata. And all the pasta is made freshly here on site. So I'm hoping to pick up some tips. Well, while Vincenzo's the boss, on the farm is definitely Maria and your beautiful sister. What's your sister's name? Margrita. Margrita. Yes. Basically they're the proper cooks of the house. Every day she makes pasta and the most beautiful food. We ate here last night, me and the crew, and it was one of the best meals I've had on my travels. It was just superb. Maria is showing me how to make a dish that originates from Minori, undundari or ricotta dumplings. These little dumplings are reportedly one of the oldest types of pasta and are traditionally prepared on the feast of the town's patron saint in July. They're made from a few staple Italian ingredients, ricotta, semolina, flour, parmesan, a pinch of salt and egg yolk. This is kind of weird because it's when my, when my grandmother passed away, the only thing that I wanted um, in the entire house where we're all chopping boards and she's got one, she had one just like this. Mm, and I've got it to this day. <laughs> the dough is rolled out into a long thick tube before being cut out into small rectangles. A ridged wooden board is used to make the grooves or you could use a fork. Here we are, look how beautiful they are. <laughs> yes, look, yes, are. appreciate this. Yeah, precious. That's hard work that is. So we've made our dumplings, now on with our pasta. Another favourite pasta here is fusilli, which Maria and her sister painstakingly hand roll. The secret, they tell me, is to make sure that the pasta isn't too thick like a dumpling, or too thin as it tastes of nothing. And I'm going to use this fresh pasta for my next recipe, along with some vegetables they grow here. Now I've got everything I need to make my great pasta dish. got here is these lovely sort of uh, green beans, like little French mm. beans, which are going to be great to go with the pasta that we've made. Yeah, now just look inside there. Check that out. I mean, this is the kind of place that, that would have chefs excited and Alan Titchmarsh wetting himself. Literally cucumber, I mean, look at these tomatoes. Yeah. Look at that. What I'm going to do is do a simple little pasta dish. We've got some great vegetables from the garden. We've got some lovely beans, courgettes, a little bit of basil. I'm going to use that to create a little paste with, of course, some of the famous lemons. First, make a basil paste by breaking the leaves down with some salt in a pestle and mortar. We can add some olive oil. And some more basil. I have to say, in all my travels and all my years of 
trying to get basil and herbs and things growing in the garden. I've never seen basil like this. Just a huge leaf. It almost looks like a big leaf of sorrel. I mean, look at the size of that sort of stuff. And it smells so pungent as well. So after it's mixed, you get this lovely, really dark green color. It just creates this lovely green paste, which is what we want to use. And we want to finish off our dish with that. Next, chop up the green beans and put them into a double boiler so they can cook at the same time as the pasta. Because the pasta is freshly made, it only takes a few minutes to cook. So lid on, bring that to the boil, and literally strain it off straight away. As it cooks, there's just time to chop up my courgette. Well, all we want to do is lightly cook our pasta. That's ready now. So now we can finish it off and incorporate this all into our sauce. And to do that, I'm going to add our courgette straight in the pan. Just a bit of crushed garlic. And to do that, we just grab some salt, crush them with the back of the knife, just to break it up. I'm going to add some of this pasta water. This is where we're going to make an emulsion and a sauce to go with everything else. So at this point, when you've got the water in, place your garlic in. We can then grab the rest of our ingredients here, add it all into our pan. More of this pasta water. And then we can add a nice paste. And this is where you start to get all that lovely flavor. And to create a nice little sauce, what I do is add some butter to it. And add our Parmesan cheese, a little seasoning and a squeeze of lemon. I can pour that over the top and create a little lemon flower. When you slice that, just a touch of basil, sprinkle that over the top, a drizzle of homemade olive oil. And there you have it, my fresh pasta with the Malfi lemon. Easy as that. But the true test is Maria. Ah, oh, thank you. This is like cooking for my grandmother at home. I've never been so <laughs> petrified in my life. I've done all the exams you can do, but, and you cook for all these Michelin star chefs. But the true test is, is whether she likes it. And molto, molto, molto buona. I think that's good. Thank Molto you very delicata. much. Veramente <laughs> buona. I can sleep happy now. I can see even the sisters applauding over that. Still to come, I go in search of one of the area's most famous seafood dishes, aqua pazza, and cook a simple fish supper inspired by it. Today on my trip around the Med, I'm in Minori on the Italian Amalfi Coast, famous for its lemon groves and spectacular views. For inspiration for my final dish, I've come to the Toro Nomana restaurant, which is the largest and oldest Norman tower on the coast. They always have one of the area's most famous dishes on the menu, aqua pazza. Roughly translated as crazy water, it's a method of poaching white fish. The dish first originated from local fishermen who would cook the catch of the day in seawater. And head chef Luigi is going to show me how it's done. What's the name of the fish? Uh, Pezzonia. Pezzonia. And they use yeah. this fish quite a lot over here. Yeah, um, originally it was done with bream and then often with sea bass. But this is the prized fish from down here. First he has strips of potato, carrot and courgette. 
baby plum tomatoes, garlic and olive oil. Then it's ready for the crazy water. And we put some water. Yeah. There's no seawater in sight, just tap water and seasoning. And once the lid goes on, you don't turn it, you don't do anything with it, just leave it alone for about 10 minutes, take the lid off and the vapour and the steam underneath there cooks the top of the fish and that way it'll be perfect. Easy as that. Look at that, well that's nearly ready. This is one of the great pure things about cooking in this neck of the woods. You've got the ocean, you've got a beautiful lemon groves behind you, the olive groves. You have to do so little to food. And the traditional recipes still ring through to this day. And there we go, the crazy water fish. It's like a lot of things when you visit the Mediterranean, particularly the Amalfi Coast, it's just simple ingredients just simply cooked. You don't need any more, do you? Especially with a view like that. That aquapazza was all the inspiration I need for my final dish. So this morning I'm heading to Minori's Fishmongers and Greengrocers to track down some key ingredients. Now hidden behind the little side streets in Minori, just off the coast, is this beautiful little fish shop. Now it's owned by a fisherman and he's got a vast array of stuff that he catches every single day. Now this is the perfect season for anchovies over here, but we've got sardines, there's mackerel in here, there's some lovely sea bass. The octopus is still alive there, it's so fresh. We've got some gurnard. There's a little bit of black bream. These are farm black bream, these smaller ones. Check out the swordfish. I've decided to use a large black bream for my recipe, so I just need some veg to go with it. That's it. What a great little fish shop. Now all this stuff is of course local produce from the melons, to the lemons, to pears, and San Marzano tomatoes. These are the ones that I'm gonna use for my next dish. Now these are highly prized around here. They're really the king of all tomatoes. Sweet, low in acid, really the best ones to make tomato sauce. So if you're looking to make your own homemade tomato sauce, then these are the tomatoes that you use. Zucculungi, look at that. The king size courgette. Have you seen that before in the supermarket? I doubt it. For my final dish in Minori, I'm heading back to the boat to try and recreate a dish similar to aqua pazza, using the fresh sea bream and the San Marzano tomatoes that I bought. So first thing I want to do is get our sauce on the go, which we can cook our fish in. For that, so we want three cloves of garlic, now most importantly with this, you use the pan with a lid. Because although you can bake it in the oven with tin foil, it's much easier to cook it all on one pan and one stove. That way you get all the flavors of the tomatoes and the garlic into the fish. Good quality olive oil and plenty of it as well. Throw the garlic in. Now at the same time, we can pop in our tomatoes. Now these are the real great little baby tomatoes. They can go in whole. Then add three finely sliced chilies and a little water. About a quarter of the way up the tomatoes, add some marjoram before putting the lid on and leaving to cook for about five minutes. Now you can cook this dish with trout, it's really, really nice. But the sea bream like that, a nice whole fish, keep it whole, there's no need to fillet it. But what I am gonna do is just score the top with a sharp knife. That way you'll get all the nice flavour in there. Some more marjoram. And we'll place it inside the cavity. And rosemary would work very well with this, especially thyme also. Black pepper. You can lift the lid off and the tomatoes just start to break the skins. Then take the whole fish, 
place it in the pan, lid on, and then leave it to cook for about 10 minutes and I can finish off the dish. This will make up for the crazy water, that salted water. Just use a little bit of capers, some black olives, and throw them in as well. And then fresh basil, just over the top, just to allow that to seep into it. And what I love, raw onion, just finely sliced, just to finish off a dish. I think it works so, so well, especially these lovely red onions here. You could actually use spring onions just at the last minute. I just put the little onion rings, sprinkle on the top. And just a final drizzle of olive oil. And there we have it. There's no crazy water in sight, but it's good enough, I think. Those tomatoes are delicious. And if you want to bring the taste of the Mediterranean into the comfort of your own home, then log out to our website, that's goodfoodchannel.co.uk, to get all the recipes from the entire series.